Okay, we're going to discuss molecular orbital theory and how it applies to the dills alder reaction. So, uh, we have basically two things that are fairly simple to keep in, keep, in, keep in mind, and they're pretty much opposites of each other. So you have to ask yourself, is it symmetry allowed? And if it's not, then it's symmetry forbidden. So what does symmetry allowed mean? It means that the homo or the lumo of the diene and the lumo or the homo of the dienophile are in phase. Um, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. I'll draw some diagrams and whatnot. Uh, forbidden is the opposite of that. If they're out of phase, then they will not, then, then the reaction will not go. So I've got a question for you just to think about, see if you can figure this out. And then I'll proceed to explain how this work will or will not work in the next part. So here's the question. Is this symmetry allowed or symmetry forbidden? And how can you tell? So if you know anything about this, go ahead and try to figure it out. And uh, we'll go ahead and erase this board and explain if it is or is not allowed. Okay, in this video we're going to continue on with what we pre previously just discussed. And that is simply... What, is this thing symmetry allowed or symmetry forbidden? So, some things to know and to consider is uh, we have we say that this system uh, the electrons are delocalized, right? So, for something to be delocalized, doesn't it still have to be inside of an orbital? And if so, does that mean that the orbital, if an electron can be from here and go through all the system and end up over here? Doesn't that mean that there needs to be a single orbital that connects all of these carbons? And the answer is yes. There needs to be an orbital that allows you to go from here to here. So what we say that, basically what we say is that that thing is a molecular orbital. It's an orbital belonging to the molecule itself that allows for the localization of an electron all the way across the system. But the same rules apply to what we already know about orbitals, and that is only two electrons can belong to an, any orbital. Whether it's a pi electron, a pi orbital, um, an s orbital, p orbital, s orbitals, d orbital, whatever. Two electrons per orbital. Uh, the next two things is we've already mentioned what homos and lumos are. Well, the homo is the highest occupied molecular orbital. And you know that you have the HOMO when you've used up all of your pi electrons when you're looking at the molecular orbitals. <coughs> the LUMO is the next orbital above the HOMO. It's the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. In other words, it's the next orbital available for bonding to occur. And these two things have to be in phase for the molecule to react and to form a new bond. Okay, so we're gonna uh, look at some of those properties and try to figure out what it is with some diagrams. So just to kind of schematically show you what's going on is we have the molecule here, and I'm saying that it's equivalent to this. So I took this thing, twisted it, laid it on its side, and these are all the orbitals the pi orbitals that belong to, this, to the conjugated pi system and the electrons of these black dashes that are being delocalized across the system. And the same thing is here. So in this next part, we're going to use this to, to explain what in phase and out of phase is and come up with a pictorial representation of the homo and the lumo so that we can predict uh, which ones are going to be in phase and out of phase and if they're going to be symmetry allowed or symmetry forbidden. Okay, continuing on, I've gone through and diagrammed the molecular orbitals pertaining to the diene. So, what we do is we take each uh, atom and we draw a p orbital. And this whole thing together represents one molecular orbital. In the um, lowest occupied, in the lowest occupied molecular orbital, which is the LOMO, we have zero nodes. Everything is in phase. And this is the most stable state for the electrons to be in. 
And notice how many pi electrons do we have in this system? We have a total of four. And right here we have a total of two pi electrons. So in this one molecular orbital in the LOMO, we've accounted for two electrons. So what we do is we go up uh, one energy level and we account for two more electrons. When we do that, we need to introduce nodes because we're going to raise the energy of the system and we start to have things out of phase. So we have one node and we make the nodes as symmetrical as possible. The most symmetry we can get is to put one in the middle. So we have one node, we've accounted for two more electrons, so we have two plus two gives us four electrons. We no longer have any electrons to worry about, but we want to look at what the LUMO looks like, which is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital where there's zero electrons. So if this one had one node, we have to have uh, one more node, which gives us a total of two. And once again, maintaining as much symmetry as possible, we put the node here and then one node here. And notice the positive signs. That's just saying that this is the same as that and that and that. And these two are the same and these two are the same. And vice versa. And continuing, continuing on. So this is the same, those two would be the same, those two are the same. Every single time you have a node, you have to flip your signs on your, on your uh, individual orbitals. Okay, so if that's, the, if that's for the diene, then looking at the dienophile, we have to do the same thing. We take the total number of carbons or atoms involved in the conjugated pi system, which there's only two. So we have two p orbitals uh, involved in forming a molecular orbital. And, and yeah, this would actually be the, the homo and the loma. That's a little weird. Anyway. Uh, we have both of these in phase, so we have zero nodes, and we have two electrons in this molecular orbital. We have two electrons total in the system because we have a single double bond. So we've accounted for all of our electrons at this point. Going up one more to look at the LUMO, we have zero electrons, we have to introduce a node, so we make it as symmetrical as possible. We have this one in phase and this one out of phase. So now, simply all you need to do to determine if two things are symmetry allowed or symmetry forbidden is we can compare this LUMO with this HOMO or we can compare this HOMO with this LUMO. It doesn't matter. It's going to give us the same result. So I'm just going to look at the two that I've circled and compare it and see if the ends line up. So if that one and that one, if you were to take this and just overlap it, would that line up with that? And does this line up with this? And the answer is yes. Those are in phase with each other. So what that means is that this reaction is symmetry allowed and it will happen. And to give an example that would not happen, we could simply add some more, uh, we could give you this example right here. And you can go through and, and try to make it show that this will not happen. And if you get that it does, then you screwed something up and go back and try to make it work. There might be another double bond in there, I'm trying to remember. See, that'll fall down. No, I think it's just one. So this is what you should get, and you can go through and diagram this out and see if this is allowed, and this should not be allowed. So you can go through and do that practice problem.